Welcome to the Transform Your Life podcast. I'm your host, Cass Henry. I'm on a mission to help women live their best and happiest life. In order to do that, I believe we need to live with a lot less clutter in our homes and in our minds. So if this is you and you're looking to learn the best tips for transforming all areas of your life, then you have come to the right place. Thanks so much for being here. Now, let's get started. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the Transform Your Life podcast. I am here with my friend, Julie. I am so excited to bring you onto the show, Julie. And I'm also excited to tell people where you are um, tuning in from or, well, not really tuning in because you're not listening. We're chatting. So um, my friends, Julie is the owner of Julie C. Butler, and she's also the host of the Build Your Beautiful Business podcast. Don't we all want that? She's a branding coach. She's an Amazon best-selling author with over 15 years of experience owning and running a business. She helps female entrepreneurs design and create a beautiful brand identity and a website. Her mission is to support female entrepreneurs to find balance between living their life through their online business, which we all need that balance. And she has created a business to help them achieve this with simplicity and ease. Her slogan is, it's your time to shine and you deserve, you deserve to have a beautiful business that will make your wildest dreams become a reality. Amen to that. So thank you so much, Julie, for being here. Um, tell everyone where you are. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for having me. First of all, I just I love connecting with you. So this was like a uh, an easy yes when you asked me like a few days ago, Julie, you want to be on the podcast? I'm like, yes, please. Um, <laughs> I am <laughs> I am tuning in from Costa Rica. Uh, we are on the uh, the Pacific Coast, at uh, the the West Coast, um, in the province of Guanacaste, in a small beach town called Playa del Coco. Actually, we live just outside of Playa del Coco, in in a town called Sardinal. But anyway, Playa del Coco is kind of like easy to find on the map. Amazing. So Julie and I actually met like many years ago um, when she lived in Ottawa, and you just heard that she lives in Costa Rica now. So Julie. Please let us know when did you move to Costa Rica? Because I want to, I want to let the listeners know how you made that transition, how you were able to kind of let go of like the majority of your belongings, what that looked like for you, and then give them a bit of business tips if they're an entrepreneur or thinking of becoming an entrepreneur. So, um, what did that like transition look like for you? So it wasn't actually crazy as it might sound <laughs> you know like my husband and I we just we together made a decision for our family that you know for many reasons which I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole of all the reasons but you know the main ones were like life is just too short right and we didn't want to spend our lives in one country especially one that has winter for like six months <laughs> so so we were like okay so that was a deciding factor and the fact that didn't love his job like he hated his job it was making him miserable and I'm like why why should we do that why should we why should you work until you're 65 years old be miserable it causing issues you know health wise because of it because of the stress we all know what stress does to us and and then you know because of my online business we were like screw this like let's just take a leap of faith you know, let's move our family to Costa Rica. And we chose Costa Rica because it's just easy to move here. <laughs> and well, tropicals, why not? Um, but, you know, at this time, we moved our two two teenage sons here. But my oldest is uh, actually started well, kind of college. He's doing his apprenticeship to become an electrician. And he's doing that back in Ottawa. So, um, but having the the having the choice right to be able to do so via right having an online business i understand that's not everybody that can do that right like it really like it really did depend on like if it, if i didn't have an online business i'm not sure you know where we would be right now probably not costa rica but <laughs> but that's kind of what happened in the you know big picture yeah and we so we decided like 
two years ago. Yeah, about two years ago in the spring, we're like, let's do this. And we spoke to a few people about Costa Rica, moving down here, owning down here, you know, living down here, uh, living down here part time and people moving here. And it took us like a year. We're like, okay, like, let's do like a year kind of like, let's take a year to <laughs> declutter, get rid of stuff. And actually make the move and we moved July 26 2023 wow you've almost been there a year I know crazy, that's incredible right? mm -hmm. and so um how is it not having your older son there with you uh not gonna lie <laughs> it wasn't easy to let him yeah. go but I keep I keep reminding myself that you know to the best of our ability, we we raise our children so that they are able to go out in the world, whatever that looks like. Like we kind of left and he stayed, but our kids, they can go to school wherever. They can move wherever in the world. You don't yeah. know. That's not a guarantee, right? Like your son, Cassandra, might grow up and be like, I want to go to university in the UK and never come back. Like we don't know that, right? So I'm sure that I'm I'm speaking to a lot of moms out here that have like 18-year-olds plus that have moved on to university or traveling the world and and they just settle they they settle in those places so um it's not easy letting go of especially he was the firstborn right like he's the baby and but you know what i think like and i get emotional every time i think or say about talk about this we did a really good job because he was ready to be on his own, you know, and, and he's in Ottawa. So he is surrounded by, you know, all of our friends and our family and everybody. So, and his girlfriends. So he's in a really good place where he's able to do this. And actually like the other day I said to my husband, I'm like, I wish he needed us more. Like, oh. <laughs> like he's so not needy. I'm like, he, you know, like he's good. Like, he, he he works because he's doing his apprenticeship. So he's making money. And I'm like, he's not even asking for money. He's not like every once in a while is like, oh, what do I got? What do I have to turn the oven on to like do this, you know, so like what cute. temperature or whatever. Yeah. But I'm like, I wish he was a little bit more needy. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, but maybe you did your job. You, yes. like, you, you did your job in that you, you raised him to be independent, independent and know how to survive on his own in the world and not need like not need that close connection to survive and and so as much as we don't want our babies to leave the nest mine's 10 so I mean I still hopefully have quite a bit of time with him here but I'm learning to slowly detach um and not wrap my entire identity around being mom um, because eventually he will go and I need to prepare myself for that and be excited for that. And so that that's that's really amazing that you were so selfless to allow him to stay and to allow him to spread his wings and not attach yourself to him or or create the bond where you have him attached to you. Because, I mean, mm -hmm. as much as we don't want to lose them, um, that wouldn't be healthy either. So that's that's amazing. Um, but also, you know, to add to that, Cassandra, is also allowing our, uh, allowing ourselves as parents, allowing ourselves to make the decision, even though, right? Like, we didn't stay back because, oh, you know, we got to make sure that our kids, you know, are, are out of university before we make a move, you know, like, no, we, we went with our, our gut feeling and our intuition, and we did it anyway. And that's just showing them what's what's possible as a human being that you can make choices like this and you know I have one here and he's 15 and like what an experience that he's getting to go to a school in Costa Rica learn Spanish and who knows what the future holds for him like it can it can look completely different I have no idea but the experiences that we give our children in for their future lives, right? Like we didn't hold ourselves back because of that, because we could have, we yeah. could have said like, no, you know what? Let's just stay. You work your shitty job and I'll keep building my you, business. You could have said everything. Right? You, you could have said, yeah, we will when it's like, okay, yeah. but when is so open ended. Like mm -hmm. we, when we have enough money, when we, you know, when we, when we feel safe enough, when, when it feels secure enough, when, you know, the kids get X, Y, Z age, it's like, no, you got to make that decision. So, um, two questions. Had you ever been to Costa Rica before and what were your biggest fears to making that leap? 
<laughs> no, we have never been here before. <laughs> but you know, the 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 will was so strong that it didn't matter. We were like, whatever. And you know what, Cassie, to be honest with you, like it just everything fell into place really easy, right? And I truly believe, like, I don't believe in like luck or coincidences or any of that stuff. I really believe in in, you know, the universe and following your intuition. And if you're any if you know human design at all, I'm a generator, I'm a sacral generator. So following my intuition is the way to go. And everything fell into place. Like it like <sighs> like it was like you couldn't have asked for anything better. So like you couldn't have that, planned it. You couldn't have planned no, it better. You had to no, be like everything I'm throwing it up in the yeah. air and I'm letting you decide. Exactly. Like, like finding someone to help us booking the flights, like it it just, it just everything fell into place really easy, like selling our house, like we sold our house in like two hours. Like, do you know what I mean? So everything was so easy up to the point. And so I trusted that I trusted that, you know, God, the universe, whatever was guiding me towards this, this destination for a reason. I'm not sure I know that reason why yet. Well, it's so like to come visit you, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what I mean? Like I just, yes. and my friend, like I've made friends here um, oh. since, you know, we've been here because that's just my personality. And and sometimes she'll ask me like, have you figured out yet? Like the reason why you're here? And I'm like, no. <laughs> but sometimes there doesn't have, like sometimes the reason it, it just, it is just what it is. Like you were meant mm-hmm. to be somewhere warm and peaceful and free your husband from that place and show your children mm-hmm. what 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 the world actually looks like. It's not just a small town here in Ottawa. You know, like spread your wings and go explore. Even if you don't have everything figured out and even if you have fear and even if there's uncertainty, screw that. There's going to be uncertainty no matter where you are in the world. So you yeah. might as well be in a beautiful place when there is uncertainty. Mm-hmm. I love but there that. was no real fear because I really truly trust like like you know what I mean like I I was like yeah this is happening like when we got here it's different you know like holy shit like what did We're we just here? do there was <laughs> yeah like there was definitely some of that and it just feels so foreign right like we're not talking like moving to the United States here we're like moving to Costa Rica it's like a different language different everything no amazon different like you go shopping for groceries you don't even know what to buy half the time because you you know it's not the same and you know what we're used to is imported so it's double the price and so there was a lot of adjustment like the first few weeks well still we're still adjusting you know even eight months later so if I hear if uh, if I'm hearing you correctly, you're saying certain things are not as accessible as it was back home, like Amazon. However, that seems like a beautiful detachment from like the commercialized world that we're we're all living in. Mm-hmm. What do you find and is the you, biggest challenge with that, though? It's not that it's a challenge. So sometimes it's like you know you want something. And not because it's like a a material thing that you want, just because something you need something like, like, for example, um, you know, my, our Chromebook broke and I'm like, okay, so I took it to a shop to try to have it repaired. The motherboard is fried probably from my son was putting it in his school bag beside his water bottle. So it probably got uh, damaged from, you know, moisture, whatever. Anyway, Mm. I can't buy a Chromebook here. They don't have them right? Where do I go to buy a Chromebook? Like, I have to figure that out. You know what I mean? Or, you know, so sometimes it's like little things like, uh, I don't know where to go to buy that. Whereas home, you know where to go to buy that, or you just order on Amazon, right? And, you know, the last few weeks, I miss not specifically the life, but I miss like, I just want to go to winners and look around like it's not even because I want to buy something but I just want to grab a Starbucks and go to winners and just walk around you know like I can't do that here and I even said to my friend I'm like why do you buy like where do you buy your clothes and she's like in the states oh wow yeah I'm like it's a good thing I don't like clothes shopping because you you know and I'm like (laughs) <laughs> yeah, like I'm not a I'm not a petite size, right? So you can't just buy something from, you know, anywhere. Like 
you know, like I love yeah. athleta and I love like, you know, like certain things, but, but I'm not a closed person. Like I have my favorites and I'm good with that. Right. So, so there's a lot of that and there's no salt and vinegar chips here. <laughs> and there's um, no yeah, cookies. Definitely a challenge for many people. I never thought about that because material items, it's not necessarily always about the excess of stuff we don't need but also the stuff that we do need like you do need a laptop to run your online business and if something breaks how are you going to get it so certain things that I'm sure never really crossed your mind in the figuring out because yeah the more that we that that we stack those what do I do when it it blocks us from taking the next step. So no wonder why you didn't really have to think about those things when you moved. Um, the good thing is, is that you have like, well, probably not dual citizenship yet, but that you can come back at any time to like buy whatever you need. Of course, you're not mm-hmm. just going to come back to Ottawa just to do a bit of shopping and stuff. But, <laughs> but yeah. um, it's a great learning opportunity. Um, sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm, I love that. And I guess the thing about Costa Rica, well, when I was there, um, one of the one of the families that um, that I had met, she said, I just want to go to Canada in the fall so I can wear pants and a sweater. And I'm like, yes. oh, I never even thought of that. She's like, I miss wearing pants and sweaters because when I was there, I was soaking wet. Like my body was just soaking wet of sweat the whole like, time. I didn't even know that was yeah. a thing. <laughs> I didn't oh, know I could I- sweat like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, when people visited us, I was like, legit, you do not need a lot of clothes, tank tops, bathing suits, and That's like it. summer dresses you do not need. Right. And I miss that too. I miss opening up the door in the morning and it's like fresh, crisp, fresh. Like cool air, like, like five, 10, 15 degrees. Right. There is never that here. N- not unless we go to the mountain, which I haven't been yet, but there are different microclimates in Costa Rica. And if you go up the mountain, it's like a good, like it, I can probably go down to like, I don't know, maybe in different parts of Costa Rica, but like 10 degrees. Okay. So yeah. So we haven't been to those places yet, but here it's like you wake up in the morning and it's 30 You're degrees. You're soaking wet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, <laughs> I really, I mean... When I was tra- when I was like trying on clothes inside the change room I'm in Costa Rica because I wanted to buy some uh, some summer dresses there. Literally everything was stuck to me. I'm like, how do people get changed in these changing rooms? Because I'm just I'm soaking wet. <laughs> I know it's crazy, and I do miss that. Like that's why in the house we have the AC on, right? Because we're AC people, even in Canada in the summer. And I I have my sweaters because I I love wearing sweaters, and yeah. I even go buy more sweaters for like if you know because if you you travel like if we want to go to I don't know. Bolivia, for example, I have no plans of going there soon. However, it's higher up, right? So you need you need your sweaters, you need your leggings and running shoes and whatever. But I miss sweater. I miss the fall too, and I miss the spring weather and the fall weather. I miss that too. Um, but when we, you were saying that uh, you know you were hot trying on dresses, also it's very uncommon here for stores to not have air conditioning not all the stores even grocery stores you walk in the grocery store like 75 percent of the grocery stores do not have air conditioning in them yeah yeah exactly so so you're like you're outside and then you have to go shopping and you don't even get a break from the heat because it's in the store (laughs) yeah you know what i mean and then if you go in the ocean it's still hot it's like a bathtub and i'm like i didn't know this weird Mm -hmm. i love that well um so I asked you about, okay, so ha, what percentage of stuff would you say you got rid of when you moved there? 95% or more. And how was that? How is it making that decision? So up until then, you had your stuff. And as soon as you made that decision, you realize, all right, we we have one option. We can only bring, you know, a couple suitcases. So what are we going to do with all of our stuff? How is that? So for me, it was easy because I don't, I don't care about stuff. Like I, I was, I'm able to let go. I've always been like that. You know, I had my boxes in the storage of like high school stuff and first boyfriend's letters and yearbooks and, you know, my first, you know, figure skating outfit and uh, medals, medals. 
all that stuff. And like, I'm like, what? I don't even look at this stuff. Like, why? Why are you holding on to all this junk? Right? I threw it all out in the garbage. I threw it in the garbage. Christmas decorations. We've owned a home for over 20 years. Do you know how many Christmas decorations we had? I imagine I like four brought, large bins. I could decorate three, probably five Christmas trees. I got rid of everything. I have like five, six, seven tubs full of Christmas decorations went to the thrift store. And then I started getting rid of like, me personally, I didn't have a lot of stuff because I just, as I go, I get rid of it. Like I just, if I'm not using it, I get rid of it. Except for the stuff in the storage room. Now I still have the box of the first baby things, right? And the school crafts and all that. I still have that. And all of the boys' Legos. Um, <laughs> that's all in a storage in Ottawa. But um, for me, it was easy because I'm not a stuff person. I don't like knickknacks. I don't like stuff. And so it was really easy to me for me to either sell it or put in a box and give it away or bring it to the Salvation Army or whatever. It was harder for my husband because he was like, he had collected a lot of like tools and so the two car garage was full. Um, so it was harder for him to let go of, you know, mm. all of his tools and stuff. And so it took him a little bit longer to like, he needed to process, right? Like, okay, I need to get rid of my stuff, but he eventually did. And a lot of things, like a lot of the tools and stuff we gave to my nephew. So it kind of stayed in the family. And, you know, to be honest, like our furniture was like, you know, a lot of it was nearing 20 years old. So it was like, whatever it's like this old chair that's all ripped up like who cares you know we didn't have like new furniture um so for me it wasn't it wasn't a big deal because it's just stuff and I was yeah. like oh I can't I can't wait to like start from scratch <laughs> as crazy as that sounds like we collect so much stuff in our lifetime and it's like you don't even use it or you don't even need it exactly. and it's like you know, and, and now like we've been living in, in long-term rentals, right? So basically like long-term Airbnbs and they only have the basics in the kitchen, right? And so sometimes it's like, oh, you know, like we bought an air fryer, we bought our own barbecue because those are things you use all the time and barbecue, especially like most days we use the barbecue because <laughs> whether you like it or not, this is Costa Rica and it is hot, like AF here. So. <laughs> <laughs> so if your air conditioner is on and the, the power goes out all the time so if you don't have the proper power surges like protectors or whatever it ruins your appliances so mm. half the time either the fridge doesn't work properly or the stove doesn't work properly and right now we're having a problem with the stove so it's like uh you know like sometimes it's frustrating because it's like oh nothing works here you know yeah it's like I just want it like the barbecue like, like my husband had the burner on the side, but it at this time of year, like from Jan December to like nearing the end now soon, it's really windy. So it was turning off the flame, you know? So it's like little things like that sometimes and to getting used to like different environment and different temperatures and everything. But, you know, it's so nice not to have a bunch of junk all the, like, you know what I mean? And this isn't our house, so it's furnished. You know, all the rentals here are furnished. So, but you know, I have like I brought my blanket with me and my sheets and things to make you know, it like, like your home. Yes. The things that like make me feel home that like, you know, I have like you know, Christmas time. I got a bunch of sage, you know, like stuff like yeah. that. The little things that kind of that remind me of home that, you know, but for the most part, it like I know to make a long story short, if it, it was pretty easy for me. Yeah, I feel like when we make a decision, whether it's we're moving away or whether we're nearing end of life or um, things like that, it's it's easier to accept that and say, okay, I'm detaching myself from my stuff. Like we create meaning to everything. Like like let's say I, I'm holding this book. If this book was in a bookstore, this is just a book. But now that it, I have it, I say, this is my book. And so I've attached um, myself to it. But the moment I just say, it's just a book, 
I'm, I'm releasing that tie between me and the item, but you have to do that for every single item. And, and people, you know, at first it's hard, but the faster you do it and the more you stay in the momentum, it, it easier it is. So that's what I feel um, that your husband went through as well. Eventually at first it's hard, but then it's like, we're doing this and this feels great. And I'm free myself. I'm literally freeing myself from all this stuff. Like when I was in Costa Rica, I, I brought my laptop, I brought a book and I brought my bathing suits. I didn't have to spend my time cleaning and tidying and organizing and sorting. I had time to just do whatever the heck I wanted. And so having less stuff gives you that freedom. And, and that's what I'm hearing that you gained tremendously uh, along with many lessons that you've had to learn while living in Costa Rica, but at least you're sweaty doing it. So <laughs> I mean, at least you're not freezing your butt off. So I, what, what's, what's better, right? Um, yeah. So I, I'd love to, I'd love to hear about how you help entrepreneurs, um, female entrepreneurs grow their businesses. Um, because I feel like what you offer is so important in closing the gap between where women are or where they, yeah, where they are right now, whether they're in, you know, the thinking phase or the dreaming phase or the starting phase and actually having that business because having an identity, having a brain identity is so important because if people don't know who you are and why you're doing it, they're confused. And so to communicate those, um, have you read the book, Start With Why? Mm -hmm. A while ago. I, like, I think I, I read that like 10 or 15 years ago. Yeah, right? I love it. Yeah. But it essentially it just talks about how your why is so important and by building brain identity that's how you do that you communicate to the world why you're doing this and, and then that's how you grow your business so i think that what you're doing is super super valuable um and then also you're removing all the question marks for them like this is where you are this is where you want to go now i can help you fill that gap so um what would you say are three tips for any woman starting her business or who's feeling kind of stuck in the beginning phases of business so the thing is, is that I think that we spend a lot of time um, analyzing our platform. And by mm -hmm. platform, I mean like your brand identity. So your logo, your colors, your website, like those are, oh my God, I think we have the same, similar. Very model. similar. Oh, <laughs> our our favorite similar. colors. <laughs> Love so, it. Uh, if you're listening, we're like comparing our water bottles. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, you know, and I think that a lot of us miss that step in, you know, like our website is our business card and you know, when you present yourself to the world and now most of the, it's all online, right? Like, I mean, you know, it's not the same as it used to be where you could just like there, it was more belly to belly, right? Like now it's so much, and we should be more online more so that we can have a global business, right? Like depending on what you do, obviously. You know, sometimes you you have to if you you offer a service locally, then that's obviously different. However, that doesn't mean that you cannot reach a global audience with different offers in your business. But the thing is, is that your website, your colors and how everything looks and how everything flows is important because that is the touch point that people that first touch point where people get to know you. And so. If you have a website that looks like it was created or designed by a teenager or a kid, you know, like that doesn't give the impression to the people who are stopping in that, hey, I'm a professional and I can help you with what I do, you know, like, so I think that a lot of us, we take, we kind of like leave that behind and be like, oh, you know, I'll figure that out later or whatever. Right now I'll try to sell myself, but your website is working for you as well, as well as you, you know, yes, I know that I know people who've made multi millions without a website. And that that is totally possible. However, more and more, right? Like, that's the first thing I go, I check your oh, yeah. website. Yeah, that's the first thing I do. And that's how I get website, most of my clients. Yes, it's through my yes. website. If your websites look like shit, sorry, the word, but um, now I have to put a, an E beside my my episode, Julie. <laughs> Come on. Oh, I, didn't say, I, didn't say, I didn't say the other word. Um, or you could just cut it out. Um, if your website doesn't look good, if visually, if it looks like it's beginner, and if it looks like it's like if it doesn't flow properly, if the message is not clear, the people, you're going to lose them. 
right? You want them to stay. You want them to keep reading. You want them to keep scrolling and you want them to keep checking out your offers. And you said you book all your people from your website. And if you had a website that looked like it was like, you know what I'm talking about, you know, yeah, it, like it works for you. And it, and it shows that you are an authority. It shows that you are professional. It shows that you, it shows you who shows people who you are. And a lot yeah. of people aren't going to come to you first, especially if you're inaccessible, they need somewhere to land and to have their questions yes. answered. And the first, whatever the feeling that they get from your website, that's impressionable. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is. And so I teach women how to create a beautiful website and a beautiful brand identity, like logo and colors and visual as well with the pictures and everything so that it flows nicely. And so that it looks nice because every single one of us have, uh, we, we're, what's the word I'm looking for? We all are top top notch at what we do. Did I say that right? You know what I'm, yeah. oh, know yeah. what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah, We're yeah. all amazing at what we do. And we are all worthy of charging top notch prices. I don't care who you are, what you do. We all should and deserve to do that. We all worthy of it. You want that website to represent your brand. Right. Like, so that's important too. like, like if you want to have a course and charge a thousand dollars for it, or if you want to do coaching and you want to charge three thousand dollars for it or five thousand dollars for it. Well, if you go to my website and it's like, oh, right. Yeah, like, it doesn't it doesn't match your service. So Feels like it's I scam know, almost. <laughs> yeah. Like, I know that you're amazing at what you do and you are worthy of what you want to charge, but the website has to represent that, right? The because website, regardless, yeah. people are going to judge and they're going to make an opinion. They're going to formulate an it's opinion. Like, and yeah. whether we like that or not, that's just human nature. If we, yeah. if, you know, let's say like, the, let's say this logo here that I'm showing, if you're on YouTube, you can see it. If you're on the podcast, you can't. It just says I'm worthy and free. It's it's the the beginning branding of my new program. If this was all, um, if, if, if this was all in black and white, or just in black, it wouldn't have that feeling that I'm trying to, I, I'm trying to show people that it feels bright and exciting and alive. But if you aren't representing that through the font, even and through the color and the layout and the photos and, and, and the text and the copy and all the things, people don't, people can't have that feeling and, and feelings are very impressionable. So what I'm hearing mm -hmm. is you help, you help take the guesswork out of that. So you teach them everything because women either get stuck in that phase or they completely skip it. And either one is not the greatest because you're not, you're not transitioning to the next step. Yeah. You know, it's so uncommon. It's so common to find female entrepreneurs who've had a website for 10 years and they haven't touched it. Like sometimes I go to someone's website and I'm like, Oh, and it's like these fonts that are like super like childish and, or colors that are not like, I don't know. Julie is totally and, laying down the judgment <laughs> on people's outdated websites. <laughs> I don't name anybody. I'm just saying that the websites, they do exist. They, and they the thing, the biggest, the biggest mistake people make, too much copy. Mm -hmm. You can't, like if you write, to, if there's too much text on your website, you lose people. You're going to lose them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It has to be like to the point, super clear so that you draw them in with the visual, the messaging and everything. So, yeah. So would you say the biggest mistake that some that many female entrepreneurs are they're either skipping this step or they're not taking enough time or they're spending like too much time there or they or they just like they don't really know what to do in this because it's a it's a full encompassing thing. Like the website is just one thing. Like I've built many websites and you know, every single time that I do it, I have to relearn. Okay, what the heck did I learn? Thank you, YouTube. But to have someone like you to take all the guesswork out of it, tell me what steps to take, when to take them, how to take them, and guide me. I mean, that's super valuable. So what would you say is, is the, like the biggest struggle that women have um, and, and why they come to you? Well, a lot of times the thing is, is that they don't have a budget. They don't have like a $10,000 budget to hire mm -hmm. someone to do all of that for them, right? And so a lot of us are pretty handy and we can figure it out on our own by customizing our own websites, right? Like do it yourself. But even if you do it yourself, 
you know, it's still good to get the help. And this is where I come in, right? I have a program that helps female entrepreneurs do just that. However, a lot of us are pretty smart and we're good at like figuring out how to customize and design our own websites. You've done it. I've done it. Right. Like, um, so I think the thing is, is that people get overwhelmed before they even step in. Right. But there are so many tools now that we can use in order to help us to build a beautiful, beautiful website. Right. And even brand like identity, like logos, my God, we can find them on Etsy, creative market, Canva, like, you know what I mean? And even color palettes, like go to Pinterest, right. And, and websites there, like if you're using WordPress, there's themes out there you can buy for like $150 and you yeah. just buy it, follow the instructions, put it Plug on, it in. install it and you're done. And they're professional and they look amazing, right? Like, I do. so there are tools out there. And if you follow the instructions, you no matter like it's good. And there's usually someone at the end of the, 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 the line that you can contact if you run the, into a scan in, into a snag. Right. So, so the thing is, is that I think they get overwhelmed before even they, they think that it's going to be difficult because that's how we were like, you know, five, 10 years ago. Wow. Like you, you don't like creating a website for ourselves. My God, like it's code and whatever. Right. Like it's not like that anymore. So I think that maybe the mentality is that, Oh my God, like, you get overwhelmed before even starting. To yeah, much it, like everything trying. in life, like ev- um, the 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 most popular subject line in emails that people send me from my website is help. I'm overwhelmed. I don't know where to start. And that's for everything that we embark on, like whether yeah, we're starting a new start. business, exactly, or whether we're starting on the health journey. I'm overwhelmed and I don't know where to start. And you're the perfect person to go to. So um, what would you say makes the biggest difference if she so what? If, if you were to give one last piece of advice, what would you say is the one thing if she was to do it right now would make the world of difference in her business? Whoever's listening. Yes. Stop overthinking everything. I think we do that way too much, right? Like as, especially as women, we overthink everything. Like we'll spend way too much time on our logo or on our colors or even our website. You know what? It doesn't have to be perfect because we can come back and tweak it later. But the thing is, is that we get stuck into that comparison game or the the overthinking and the comparing and the everything that we don't launch our our offer or our website or whatever, because we want it to be perfect before we do so. Wow, there's no such thing as perfect. Just And you can it change it. There. Make yes. it good. Make it good enough. Put it out there and then tweak it as you go. But if you exactly. stay stuck in the overwhelm and in the perfectionism, I created this on Saturday or on Sunday after I had my run and I was like, oh, I have this idea. I went and bought the um, the URL. I created a mini logo. I created the program and I've already launched. I have already put two women into the program and we only start on June. But had I stayed in the, oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what the colors. I don't know what the font. I don't know. Uh, da, 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 da. I would never start. And that means that I don't get to help all those other women. So all the women that are listening right now, they're wanting to start a business, listen to Julie and get out of the overwhelm, out of the perfectionism and just start. And if you don't know where to start and how to start, then Julie, how can people find you? Well, you can find me. It's easy. JulieCButler.com. And the C, that's just my middle name because when I created my logo 15 plus years ago, it just looked better with the C. So it's stuck. <laughs> so I love JulieCButler.com. And obviously on social media, Facebook, you can find me also JulieCButler.com and Instagram at JulieCButlerXO. <laughs> oh, so sweet. Well, Julie, thank you so much for this amazing conversation. I hope that you've inf- inspired other women to start their businesses. And, and if anything, maybe just inspired them to go get sweaty in Costa Rica. <laughs> and I will be very sweaty. You. Yes, exactly. I didn't even know that was possible. So I look forward to chatting with you soon. And thank you again so much for sharing that information with everyone thank listening you. and watching. And I'll chat with you soon. Thank Bye. you so much. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Transform Your Life podcast. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the show, leave a review if you enjoyed today's episode, and share with a friend who you think might benefit from it. You can also post it to your socials and tag me at Transform Spaces so that I can also tag you back and chat with you. If you haven't heard already, I am launching my new group coaching program in June. It's for women who are struggling to keep up with all of life's demands. Whether it's trying to wake up without pressing the snooze button because you dread the busy day ahead, 
You feel like every day is Groundhog's Day and you're wondering when you're going to get off the hamster wheel or you seem to be looking around your home and life and being constantly reminded of how you just can't seem to keep up. The dishes are piling in the sink, the laundry heaping in the baskets, and the weight is adding to your waistline. Not to mention the voice in your head that just won't shut up about how far behind you are in life and how you suck at this whole adulting thing. Trust me, I get it because I too have been there, which is why I've created this program called Worthy and Free. This is a three months of group coaching calls with me to help you rediscover your worth and break free from all of this stuff that's been holding you back from living your best and most fulfilling life. Habits, morning routines, self-talk, self-care, decluttering your crap, and changing that voice inside your head. You may also ditch some toxic relationships shed a few pounds, and maybe even take that trip you've been saying you want to take for the past five years. Who knows? You might even ditch that nine to five and pursue your dream business idea. Whatever it is that you've been saying you want to do but haven't due to fear, anxiety, overwhelm, lack of the how-to, or, well, whatever has been holding you back, it's your time to shine. Don't wait 10 more years to realize your potential. On top of this, getting 50% off of this round, you'll also be getting to learn from 20 amazing guest experts on all things yoga, meditation, sound healing, learning how to eat intu intuitively, heal from toxic relationships and past traumas, connect with your intuition and spirit guides, and the list goes on. But wait, there is more because I love giving tons of bonuses. You will also get lifetime access to this program because, yes, if you've been wanting to snag this once-in-a-lifetime 50% off deal, but you fear you won't have the time when we start in June, that's okay. You can start and restart at any time. The spots are limited because I want this first round to be an intimate as I build out this program. Oh, and I'll also be sending out a round a bonus welcome gifts to the sisters that join in. So if this is you and you're ready to break free from all the clutter that's been stopping you from living your best and happiest life, then I invite you to click the link in the show notes to join the waitlist now for my new group coaching program, Worthy and Free. We start June 1st and card open soon. See you all next week on the Transform Your Life podcast, my friend. Bye!